But first, a historic vote on Capitol Hill. Ketanji Brown Jackson is confirmed as the Supreme Court's first black woman justice. President Biden and Judge Jackson watched from the White House as senators voted. In all, 53 senators supported her, including three GOP members. Judge Jackson will also become the first former public defender to sit on the nation's highest court. She'll replace Justice Stephen Breyer once he retires at the end of the court's current term. CBS News chief legal correspondent Jan Crawford has more on Judge Jackson's confirmation from Capitol Hill. Well, her confirmation was contentious, but it was never really in doubt. And now, with today's vote, she'll take her place in history. The A's are 53, the nays are 47. With Vice President Kamala Harris presiding, Judge Ketanji Brown Jackson made history. The 51-year-old, who wrote in her high school yearbook she hoped to be a judge, will be the Supreme Court's first black woman justice, fulfilling a campaign promised by President Biden. He watched the vote in the White House with Jackson, who Senate Democrats celebrated. We are beginning to write another chapter in our nation's quest for equal justice under the law. And that chapter begins with three letters, K, B, J. The vote was bipartisan, barely. As Republicans left the chamber, one of them, Senator Mitt Romney, stood alone. He and two other moderate Republicans, saying Jackson is qualified and the confirmation process broken, joined all 50 members of the Democratic caucus in voting yes. Jackson's qualifications are out of Supreme Court central casting, top Ivy League and legal credentials, nearly a decade of experience as a federal judge. I stand on the shoulders of so many who have come before me. Her confirmation hearings often were heated. No, Senator, I didn't say versus. That's exactly what you said. Republicans say she's soft on crime and extremist. Based on her record, I believe she will prove to be the furthest left of any justice to have ever served on the Supreme Court. Replacing Justice Stephen Breyer, Jackson won't change the balance of the current solidly conservative court. But as the first black woman, her perspective and experience could have influence, and her voice already is being heard. And for now, she's still Judge Jackson. She won't become justice until Justice Breyer steps down at the end of the term, probably in late June, early July. At that point, she'll be officially sworn in and get right to work. Nancy? Jan Crawford, thank you very much. And for more on this, I want to bring in CBS News congressional correspondent Scott McFarland. Scott, thank you very much for joining us tonight. Hey, Nancy, what a day here. A day you actually could feel it being an historic and definitive American moment. You saw in Jan's piece, there was that standing ovation in the Senate chamber. Those are rare in the Senate chamber. And we noticed, Nancy, outside the second floor of the Senate chamber, there were people just near the chamber today to say they were in proximity to this moment. A moment in history indeed. And Scott, as we mentioned, three Republicans supported Judge Jackson making her confirmation bipartisan. How significant was it for President Biden to get Democrats and GOP members behind his nominee here? And Nancy, at this political moment, this politically toxic political time, bipartisan is a binary thing. Either you are or you aren't. And this vote was. And that was important to the administration to underscore the significance and the mandate Judge Jackson comes in with. But what's not lost on folks here is that there is a tenuous future for other nominees when the Senate is controlled by the opposing party. Republicans were pretty emphatic this week that if they were in control of the U.S. Senate, it's not certain Judge Jackson would have gotten a vote. Yes, Senator Collins and Senator Romney and Senator Murkowski voted for her. But Senator Lindsey Graham of South Carolina said because Judge Jackson was, in his words, so liberal, she wouldn't have gotten a vote if Republicans controlled this chamber. And with Republicans potentially favored to take over after November, it does raise the question, is this a Supreme Court that is destined for eight or seven members in the future? Nancy, if the White House and Senate are controlled by opposing parties. A very interesting question there. And, of course, Judge Jackson will not take her seat on the high court until Justice Breyer officially retires. So how will she be preparing between now and then? Well, as Jan reported, the 
judge won't take over, won't be sworn in until Justice Breyer steps down at the end of the term, and that's mid to late June. There's a summer recess for the court, and it's a lengthy recess. They don't reconvene until September for emergency motions in October to sit again in the court and hear cases. It is likely during the summer Judge Jackson would do the administrative work for a new justice. Got to hire clerks, got to get staff ready. It's very much like a small business in a Supreme Court justice's office. You have to staff up and get yourself um, ready and assimilated to how things function. But also, there should be a ceremony, an investiture ceremony that may come before the first day of the court after the Red Mass in October. Certainly not smooth sailing there. And uh, there is, of course, that 11th hour complication we're talking about just before the vote. Tell us a little bit more about that. This was a surprise, Nancy. Moments before Speaker Nancy Pelosi was to give her weekly national press conference, her staff announced she had tested positive mm -hmm. for COVID, was asymptomatic, but was going to isolate. She was in close proximity yesterday, not just to President Biden, but to senators who were to vote today, Republicans Rob Portman and Tom Tillis, the Democratic leader, Chuck Schumer. We caught Senator Portman on his way to the floor and asked if this was going to change his day, if he was going to isolate. And he said he was told that he wasn't in close enough proximity for long enough to warrant isolation. But there were questions raised just before the vote whether everybody was going to be there. But, Nancy, there was 100 100 percent attendance for this historic vote. And that is something we will get to a little bit later. Scott McFarland, thank you very much for joining us tonight. Thank you.